Eleven years after being first released to Alpha, Minecraft continues to have an active monthly player base of 126 million individuals, according to a May 2020 Verge article. As one of, if not the largest video games in current history, the success of Minecraft has not only reshaped gaming, but helped YouTube and Twitch grow to the size they are today, as explained in a 2019 Polygon article. Suffice it to say, Minecraft is a big deal. By focusing on the diverse Minecraft gaming community, Mojang not only made and continues to make a game that appeals to a wide spectrum of individuals, but also fosters an inclusive and overall positive community both within and outside of the game. The creator of Minecraft, Marcus Pearson, known to many people as Notch, developed the game as a side project and uploaded the game to TIG Source and Any Games Forum in 2009. I really know. It's uh, a little bit strange because uh, uh, when I started making Minecraft, I was on this g game developer forum and that's kind of how I was talking about it. And then people were interested in this. I set up like uh, a blog writing about it and started tweeting and people from there started joining it and it kind of grew from there. And uh, I haven't really done many like public interviews and I don't like submit articles to web gaming sites or anything. So it kind of just grew organically and I didn't really control it or want to control it. As the game grew a community and Notch earned more money, he quitted his job and along with two other individuals founded Mojang to pursue making Minecraft a more fleshed out game. Throughout this process, Mojang hired a small team of programmers who used their own personal ideas and interests, alongside feedback from the growing player base to make the game better. At this point in time, Minecraft may have not been directly focused on inclusivity and diversity in the way we normally judge companies and games, but it was obvious through the ways Mojang encouraged the modding community, YouTubers, and even in the way and how they went about hiring new employees. Meet Lydia Winters in 2010, when she made her first Minecraft world. Okay, so this is me starting. I don't even know how I walk. <laughs> That's sad. Oh. <laughs> but despite the only other game she had ever played being Oregon Trail, she began to develop her YouTube channel and gain a following. Yet, by June 2011, she was unsure what she should be doing, so she decided she would reach out to Mojang and ask if they would allow her to interview them for her YouTube channel at the upcoming E3 conference. Mojang's CEO at the time, Carl Manon, pushed back and asked if she would host a part of the booth for them. She said yes. Within a year, she ended up being hired by Mojang and relocating to Switzerland as Mojang's new director of fun, later retitled brand director, where she would not only work on Minecraft's public image and Minecraft events, but also make sure that Minecraft became even more inclusive. One well, can see the foreshadowing of what would be to come in her very first YouTube video. Whoa, I finally did something. I got a cactus and that one's moving. So I guess you just have to keep... <laughs> How do I make that voice sound girlier? Because that is not the sound that I would make if I was getting hurt. It is at this point when focusing on a creative and open community would become of utmost importance to everyone. During the years that followed, Minecraft would grow and become a more developed game, adding new blocks and mobs with many ideas coming from the community on top of those already existing internally. Then, on June 2014, Mojang released a statement explaining that they would begin enforcing their end-user license agreement, which they highlighted limits the way multiplayer servers can and cannot earn money. Through this public statement, Minecraft was saying that they were going to make sure that all players on a Minecraft server would start on a level playing field and prevent pay-to-win models of exploitation. A vocal portion of the community, many of whom were suspicious of the existence of the problem Mojang was addressing, began attacking the company's policy. In frustration, Notch decided that Mojang should become someone else's property and alongside the other two founders looked for a company to acquire Mojang. By the end of 2014, Microsoft had acquired Mojang and the three founders of Mojang had left. For Notch, he stated that he sold Mojang for his own sanity and so that the game would continue being a game made for the Minecraft community. It appears that Microsoft understood from the beginning the importance of the Minecraft community as they worked to make the transition smooth for those who worked at Mojang. 
Less than a year after Microsoft acquired Mojang, the game was making movement to become more inclusive of all genders and sexual orientations. One of the ways Mojang addressed this was by adding a default skin in 2015. Amanda Phillips, a feminist game researcher, notes in their book Gamer Trouble that the visual appearance or skin of an avatar within a game invokes a history behind the in-game avatar. Within Minecraft, it is possible for players to change the skin of their avatar to an extraordinary degree of diverse appearances and histories. However, for the longest time, there was only one default skin, Steve. The default skin of Steve is a brown-haired blue-eyed avatar with a goatee. This gives off the impression of an adult male with facial hair, something that is not indicative of the greater Minecraft community. As a consequence, in 2015, Minecraft decided to add a second default skin, Alex, a red-haired green-eyed avatar with a ponytail, who is generally gendered as a female. While both defaults are considered technically genderless like nearly everything else within the game, it was an important step forward towards gender inclusivity within the Minecraft gaming community. Being an empowering force for women and girls is something Mojang has had to continue to focus on as the brand director Lydia Winter explains when she says, If you're not really careful and vigilant, Alex is always pushed behind Steve or she's loving animals and never doing any of the fighting. They both have to be shown in many different roles because we have so many different players on a daily basis. I'm talking about this and looking at it constantly. Mojang's focus and understanding that the community of gamers who play Minecraft are diverse and that they have a direct role in promoting inclusivity is fundamental to not only what helps Minecraft have one of the most open communities, but also make a positive difference in the lives of others. In 2015, Mojang not only introduced their more feminine default skin, but also began and continues to take steps that ensure that Alex is treated as an equal to their counterpart, Steve. The next community for Mojang to begin focusing on and empowering was the LGBTQIA community. A few years before Mojang took on this challenge, Amanda Phillips wrote that, quote, Minecraft conceals within its thoroughly exploitable mathematical models queer possibilities of reproduction, temporality, and occupation of space that move beyond the purposes for which they have been co-opted. With the groundwork of Mojang and Minecraft becoming more empowering of all genders, in 2016, Mojang attended the Stockholm Pride Parade in support of both the LGBTQIA gaming community and the world in general. This would be something that Mojang would continue each year. Everywhere. Uh, we support an open community online and offline. We're celebrating everyone's right to be themselves. By taking these in-game and corporate steps, Mojang not only shows that they support their community and are working to ensure that it is an open community, but that they take this statement seriously, going so far as removing in-game references to Minecraft's creator Notch and barring him from attending Minecraft's 10-year anniversary due to homophobic, transphobic, and misogynistic tweets that Notch has made since selling Mojang to Microsoft. Beyond Pride, Mojang and Microsoft collaborate through the Block by Block Foundation to work on a wide variety of social and global issues such as gender equality, human rights, and climate change. Since Minecraft's inception, those who work with Mojang have focused on collaborating with the community to make Minecraft and the diverse community better and more empowering. You, you mentioned this big pile of things, like how big is this pile? We get a lot of ideas from the community. We've got a website with, I think, hundreds of suggestions many, and we many. have <laughs> just as many inside the company as well. At Minecraft. Through this community-focused approach, Mojang has not only developed a game adored by many, but has also created a community that is regarded as one of the least toxic gaming communities in our modern world. Because of Minecraft and Mojang, many people have found themselves empowered to be themselves and make the world a better place, which is something that we can all desire and celebrate.